Well, first of all, it means I'm old. Secondly, I've been blessed with the ability to do something that I really love. And, uh, you know, the wins and the losses, they come and go, but it's the people, the relationships that you build. Um, I have no kids myself, but I feel like I have hundreds. There are great stories, individuals that come from uh, broken homes, disadvantaged backgrounds that wind up being successes, getting college degrees, that you feel pride about that. There are stories of uh, overcoming disastrous situations like Mike Williams, who was shot and paralyzed and now trying to walk again. Um, those that have gone on to the NBA and had great successes, doctors, lawyers, um, and to have them come back and like it's the first day that we've ever met, those are the things that mean the most. The games are exciting, obviously, and you have all kinds of memories of those. Uh, but really, it's the people that you meet and the relationships that I've developed with the, with the coaches as well because you're together so much. Um, other broadcasters, some of my best friends in the world, and uh, when you play non-conference games, you get to meet new people, um, new players, uh, players on opposing teams that you, you get to know. So it's a, it's a people business, and the games are just fun. What better thing can you do for a living than broadcasting a game? And uh, to be the eyes and ears of people that are shut in, prisoned, never have been to a game, that are blind, those are the, those are the real perks of the job. It's a people business, and I'm just fortunate to, to be in a position to do something I love. There have been so many. Probably the Kansas game in 2006, where the Braves, uh, not many people thought they would win, but they did. And uh, to win that game and then go on to beat Pitt after that and advance to the Sweet 16, which is certainly different now than it was back in 1954 when they advanced to the championship game in 1950, because now the athletes are different and it's much more difficult to get into the tournament. So th those would have to be a couple of them. And something I, I don't know that we'll, uh, we'll ever see it in college basketball. They could get close, but with a three-point shot and a shot clock, I don't know that there'll ever be a seven-overtime game again. And Bradley in Cincinnati in 1981 certainly was that. Deion Jackson shot in St. Louis uh, where he just turned, he lost the ball and turned around and just flung it up and it, and it went in to beat, uh, at that time, uh, Southwest Missouri State, which is now Missouri State. First game I ever did in Anchorage, Alaska, with um, uh, the Braves taking on Kentucky, ranked second in the nation at that time. That was the first game. And on the, that plane trip, meeting a, a man that be, became a good friend of mine, and that was Jim Valvano, and, uh, and what he meant to my life and to, to all of those that uh, are afflicted with cancer now. He still is, is helping in his name. Uh, championship games against Tulsa and Illinois State, and just all of those, but uh, I guess those would be the highlights, but it would be hard to top that night in Auburn Hills, Michigan, when, uh, when Bradley beat Kansas. That was, uh, that was very, very special. Well, in starting, it was, it was a dream of mine because I grew up listening to Mort Cantor, and, uh, and he was like an idol of mine, and then to actually work with him. And um, I told Mort, when the exclusivity came in I, and WMBD was chosen to do the games, I said, what this is, it gives me an opportunity to carry on your legacy. And with all of the great broadcasters that have done the games before, Chick Hearn, Bob Starr, Mark Holtz, Bill King, you can go on and on, all the, all the great names. Um, you know, it was really an honor and a privilege and fulfilling something that I wanted to do as a kid. And you never say, well, I'm going to, do a thousand games, you just worry about the next one as it comes. And uh, because I'm an alum, and because I am a native of central Illinois and all my family and friends are here, uh, I don't worry about things I can't control. And so uh, the opportunity, although presented itself, you always have to make decisions in your life. And you have to do what's gonna make you happy. And it's not necessarily money, and it's not necessarily fame 
or it's not necessarily reaching a certain level. Because each and every day, if you're happy with what you do and happy with yourself, and you have friends and family that love you, then that's all you really need. And so that's how you get to a thousand in one place. I think the important thing is you prepare for each and every game as it's your last, because we never know. And I don't have a goal in mind, but I, will, I do know this. I will never disgrace the position, the heritage, the tradition of, of broadcasting Bradley basketball. When I slip, I have friends that will tell me that it's time to let someone else do this. And uh, they would be my friend to tell me that. And so when that time comes, then someone else will step into this role. But it won't be the next game. And I'm not sure when that'll be, but when it's time, I think I'll know that it's time to, uh, and I have no number in mind. Only, only my God knows that number. And uh, when it's time, I'll know.